turns out I don't I don't care at all for race bikes. I think this double water bottle thing is pretty cool, but like other than that, uh, this is just the wrong bike for me. This is also a pretty long bike. It's uh, it's like a racer. This would be a really good beater bike, drunk bike, uh, pushing around town bike. So I'm working on that today, and I've got a couple of things left over from past builds that uh, are going to serve that purpose quite well. So this is a uh, drum brake internally geared five speed, which is pretty dope. Um, I hope the uh, chain link is right because I'm not going to be able to tension it. Looking at this, this is a vertical dropout, so whatever I get is whatever I get, um, which might mean that I need to pick up a chain tensioner. It's not a big deal. It's pretty cheap. I can grab one on Amazon. I like it to be easy when I'm riding. Um, so this is going to be on the back wheel. My buddy gave me these bars to uh, these are going to be super comfy. Bought uh, two new levers. Um, the reason I got new levers is that the rear brake over here is basically a long pull. It needs a lot of action. So if you see the pivot there, it's pretty far away. You've got about an inch between the pivot and the wire comes in. And this is for road brakes, like the ones that are currently on the bike. You see that pivot's about two-thirds an inch, maybe a half inch away, if even that. This doesn't pull as far, which is great for that front brake. Uh, this pulls really far, which is shitty for that front brake, shitty for that rear brake, but it's gonna be great for the drum brake inside. Picked up some spokes, picked up this cheap generator hub off eBay. This is a rim that just came with an order I made when I built this wheel. I'm not gonna be building this up in this video today. That'll be a completely different video. And uh, if you like what I'm doing here, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. Super leftover tire from a build I made, uh, so we'll have these kind of fat knobby, uh, high pressure. Pressure matters. The higher the pressure, the less you're working, the less rolling resistance you have. And these bad boys go up to 125. That's about as good as it gets for, for a tire this wide. Eh, 25C, not that wide, but. So, I'm gonna dive into this. I'll stop when stuff feels relevant. Also, if I wanted to pull these pedals off, uh, one of them's backwards threaded. Uh, what I always do is I get on top of the bike like I'm sitting on it, throw the wrench in from the back. If I put the wrench forward, I'm tightening. If I pull the wrench backwards, I'm loosening. Woo. So this wheel's gone. Do not need you anymore. Everything else is staying on there. I started a bike co-op in Alabama. Um, wasn't trying to make any money on it, wasn't trying to work there that often. Because of both of those things, it didn't work out. So I learned that I needed more help in life to do cool shit. So uh, I can't see this here, but I kind of don't want to push that pin all the way out. So I uh, I start pushing, I back it up, try to break it by hand. Now, the reason you want that pin to come out is you can never get it in again. Don't even try. And if you do succeed, you have just wasted your time. Boom, pops it out. And I'm going to show you this close up. Hopefully you can see it. Left a little pin in there. When I go to reattach this, it's going to hold itself in place. All I have to do is pop it together. It's not going anywhere, so I don't have to hold that as hard when I come back together. Anyway, Park Tool CC3. Anything that this doesn't fit into is okay. Anything that this does fit into needs to be replaced soon as crap. Anything that this fits into is bunk and you gotta get rid of it immediately. I'm gonna hook it in, pull it straight, try to shove it, that can be replaced. But it doesn't need to be replaced yet, so I'm probably gonna use this chain until I order my next round of parts. I'm leaving the cranks on because I don't have replacement cranks. I'm gonna change the seat out, but that's not important right now. Uh, I'm gonna go wash my hands so that uh, I don't get the shit all over the grips. Be right back. Got these bars, the grips are on them. It's kind of a pain in the ass to get grips off. I'm gonna show you how to do that. White rain, flat head if I'm really confident about the quality of these grips, which I am. Shove it in as far as feels appropriate. And by feels appropriate, I mean I don't wanna bust out the other side of this grip, so. Pry it open, spray that hairspray in, spin that grip, pops right off. Why hairspray? When it dries, it doesn't slide. Use WD-40, you're never gonna get it off. Our laundry robots are back there doing our laundry for us. It's pretty dope. Yet another job taken away by automation. I want them, you can put these upside down like that and get this kind of cool sweat, sweat look, but I'm not looking for cool, I'm looking for comfort, man. The question we gotta deal with with these bars is, what's up with this shifter? So, uh, I find my five millimeter, the most used millimeter ever. I know that because I've lost more of them. That's my metric. Fun fact of the day. The front brake is the one that stops you. The back brake only does about, and I'm making numbers up here, 30% of the stopping, 70% comes from the front. And the reason is, is when you slow down, your weight tips forward, so you end up putting a lot more weight on that, and the back wheel kind of picks up, which means it skids a lot faster. And once it skids, it's not slowing you down. So the thing about front brake and rear brake is, front brake's the one that flips you over the handlebars, but you know, just don't be dumb about that. Keep your weight back. It's kind of hard to flip forward unless you're uh, putting your crotch on the bars or something dumb like that. Um, you know, that's a fun fact. There's two things that are a little weird here. One, these internally geared hubs, the axle is oversized and it's supposed to slide into the dropout like that. My question is then, my shifter is going to be going off in a weird direction and it looks like the answer is not necessarily. The axle stays stationary and the rim spins at a different geared speed around it. So all the gears are making this part spin faster than this part and this part is fixed. I need to mount a tire before I put this wheel on for real because this is a complicated setup. Uh, the benefit is uh, you park it on a rack and somebody hits the back end of your bike, it's not going to mess with your gears. 
Uh, you can shift at a stoplight. You don't have to be moving to change gears. So once you set this thing up, you're good to go. Looks like this wheel's not that well dished. I'm gonna throw a tire on it and uh, we'll get back in there. I found a couple of problems with this bike while I was kind of cleaning it up and going over it. This right here could be vent chain rings. I've got some new chain rings on the way because um, I realized I could do internally geared half step gearing like a boss. We're going to do that some other time. I'll explain what that is. As you see, it gets really close right there and that lines up with this piece right here. I'm just going to bend it back. Uh, those are pretty nice cranks. I was going to sell them, but you know, they're bent. So whoever would buy them would want them. So I'll just bend them back. When you're bending aluminum, you got to be careful. It only bends so many times before it breaks. There is no minimum fatigue limit. So steel, you can kind of tap on it and it doesn't do any damage, but aluminum, every little stress builds up. So if I did this for a million years, the hub would crack in half because it's aluminum. Um, here's the other problem, and this is generally bad uh, anywhere you find it. That shouldn't be moving like that. And that's where it's happening. So uh, when I respaced this hub before, I didn't tighten it all down right. Here's the last problem. My thing's too big. So that'll be, I don't know, maybe easier, maybe harder to deal with. I could tog out a little material on this, this here. That's just the very end. So like the material matters more uh, at the stress point, so at the bends and where it's clamped, uh, that's where it's gonna bend, that's where it's gonna bend, that's where it's gonna bend, not so much there. I measured it with my calipers, which are out of batteries, but uh, you know, they still work. They've got the rough measurements on the outside, and this is some, some rough work. I'm sorry, I was just poking that hole, that's weird. Um, I can also hog some material off this. Uh, it'll be a little harder to hold. That nut in and of itself is too big, which is part of the problem, and that'll be really easy to turn down, so I'll take care of that too. Um, it's gonna be the same problem I have on the other side when I do half-step gearing, uh, so I can learn on this one. I'm learning on the one that's more expensive because it's the one that's more immediately needed for this project, which is opposite of how I would normally do that, but we'll see how it goes. That's a lot better. It's not perfect, but it's better. I'm hoping those new chain rings will take the rest of it out, but either way, that's a chain line that's not wobbling so much that that chain will pop off, which is what's important to me. Bicycles are great because they've got all these reference points in these frames, so first time I realized the hub was messed up, it's because the wheel was shaking back and forth down here. Look at these reference points. You can see if your bottom bracket's loose by grabbing it and trying to shake it against the frame. Mine's not, it's probably sealed. Problem one fixed. This is cool, this is the inside of that brake. This is the drum brake, so this is kind of inside the hub, fixed in place, everything's spinning around it. There's just a simple cam here that pushes it. So on the hub side, um, this is the nut that was loose right here. It's tightened down to this one and this one, which are locked together. All of your gear shifty stuff is happening on this side. And on this side, you've got a smooth braking surface in there. Definitely don't put grease in there. That would make your brakes uh, not work. But uh, if you buy this hub, uh, don't fuck with it. It'll just work. That's not great right there. That's rubbing. And we don't have a ton of room on the other side. I'd say what that means to me is this wheel is out of dish, which is saying that the hub isn't perfectly centered on the rim. But the last bike this was on had a lot more space to play with. It was not a retired race bike as this one is. So I've got a fancy tool I can use to make this thing super straight. Although I used it when I built this wheel, so maybe it wasn't straight enough. You can do this without. What we're gonna end up doing is just try to walk this rim over towards this side of the bike a little bit by uh, adjusting these spoke nipples. And I think what's gonna do it, we'll see. Half turn loose, half turn tight. And as you see when you back up, some of these spokes are pulling to one side of the rim. Some of these spokes are pulling to this side. Some of these spokes pull into this side. So if it's pulling to the side that it's too close to, I'm gonna loosen. If it's pulling to the side that it's too far from, I'm gonna tighten. Um, you can also do this to get small wobbles out. And uh, if your frame is fat and not skinny like mine, you can usually use your brake calipers to kind of eyeball it too. I'll show you this $200 machine. That thing's dope. We'll use it for uh, the video where we build the front wheel, but uh, you don't need it. It's not necessary. It's not hitting the frame anymore, which is good. From where I'm sitting, it looks like I got halfway from where it started to where I'm trying to get it to go. So I'm gonna end up doing another round of half turns on this. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but you started your valve stem. That lets you know where to stop. You don't want to count up to 36 or however many spokes you've got. It's easier to just have a visual reference. I'm going to do one more round, see if that gets us to where we want to go, and um, we'll take from there. First things first, the outside of this nut is uh, bigger than the inside diameter of my handlebar, so that's got to come down. I've already worked on this one a little bit. This is for the other side. It's an older one. I'm gonna use it for the front gears, which is a little bit non-conventional to have internal gears and front gears, but we're gonna do it because we can. Boogered my threads. Hey man, focus up. 
I'm gonna fix that somehow. That's what I get for being hasty. I'm running this to taper this down. You can already see how much material I hogged off. Really, what matters is that taper there. And as long as I've still got some taper for it. <laughs> Ain't bad. Now we gotta take some material off this, and these are harder because how are we gonna fixture them? Maybe I can dremel and do half at a time and clamp them in. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Realized as I was putting this bike together that with a vertical dropout, I'm gonna have to do a chain, chain tensioner, so I picked up a chain tensioner. And then realized that with a chain tensioner, I can run both front gears. And then when I was looking up the gearing on this back hub, which is third gear, is direct drive. So whatever you've got in the front to the back is right. And then each gear above it and below it gets 25% uh, harder or easier. I realized I could do half step gearing with the front chain ring. I've got an extra uh, bar end shifter, so I'm gonna have to hog out material on the other side. That's that's a whole other thing, talking about half-step gearing, but um, when I rode my bike northern Ohio from central Alabama, I had half-step gearing, really enjoyed it, so I'm kind of excited about bringing this back. This bike is almost done. Uh, hook up the front brake, that's the last thing I've gotta do. Oh, in hindsight, it would have been way better to just buy bars that were compatible with the bar end shifters. I was really trying to stick to my philosophy of uh, the tool you have is better than the tool you need. In this case, the tool I needed was handlebars that work with bar end shifters. So I would have had to buy different brake levers. I would have had to buy different handlebars, so it would have been pretty expensive. So maybe maybe this is a wash, and uh, I'm pretty happy with how it went. I'm going to wrap this thing up, and we'll see how it rides. I mentioned this earlier, but this is really one of the trickier parts of bicycle stuff. Uh, one of these ped pedals is backwards threaded. The other one is not. It's impossible to remember which is which. I'm gonna tell you how I remember. I'm standing over the bike, facing the handlebars, and I'm about to say something that I 100% believe to be true, and then I'm going to go through the process that will prove me wrong if I'm wrong. So I've got a lot on the line here, but I think I have a pretty firm grasp on the most basic science. So you got your wrench, doesn't matter which hand, that I also believe to be true. You put the pedal wrench in down. I like to get it as close to this vertical, vertical thing as possible. Forward is tightening, backwards is loosening. Doesn't matter which side. Oh goodness. Oh, I was wrong! Uh, so it only works if the bike's right side up. Wow. I don't understand why that's different. Oh, because the pedal on the side of the bike changes. Forward tightens, backwards loosens. And the way you remember that is when you pedal forward, so uh, I do not have the firmest grasp on science. I have a slightly better grasp on science than I did before. Maybe it's just spatial awareness, but uh, if the bike is upside down, this is backwards. But um, when the bike is right side up, uh, forward tightens, backwards loosens. And then when the bike's upside down, it's reversed because science and my firm grasp of it. Because they're reverse threaded, one of these is gonna say R and one of these is gonna say L. Now when the bike is upside down, R and L will also be reversed, which is why this didn't work when the bike was upside down. Please don't put dry parts on bikes. There's very few places that aren't supposed to be greased. Ah, these pedals are so white. Don't have far to go here. Might be worth trying to find a shorter piece of housing, but I'm just gonna go for what I got. I'll always get more housing later. So, uh, when you cut them with regular flats, you wanna make sure that's clear and you're not running metal against your cable. I should not have put air in this front tire. This front tire is crap. Figured I could test ride it. Not have to put a new tire on this wheel when I was building another wheel for it anyways. The rear cog back here is eighth inch, so this chain doesn't fit on it. I already ordered an eighth inch chain because the chain rings I wanted for the half step project only came in eighth inch, so that problem's gonna solve itself. Irrelevant irreverence. Irrelevant irreverence. Irrelevant irreverence.